Happy little girl escaped back to her tribe. She escaped back to her tribe and told them about the invasion. And the tribesmen were not surprised. The world is a place where the strong meet the weak. They didn't take it seriously. Instead, they laughed at the girl's ignorance. While they were arguing, while they're arguing, the monster's thermal imagery with infrared scanning to lock onto the sudden attack. The boy had just shielded his hand from the blinding red light. He was hit by a crossbow. He fell to the ground. His partner panicked. He looked to his left and to his right, but he couldn't find the attacker. Because the monster was in stealth mode, they didn't know where the attacker was buried. The clansmen are in a state of confusion. They didn't dare to make a move. Suddenly, three arrows were withdrawn from the corpse. The clan members with quick reflexes immediately shot at the unusual direction. One of the arrows hit the monster right in the arm. The stealth mode was destroyed. It was instantly knocked back to its original form. One of the clansmen bravely rushed forward. Wielding a spear, he fought it head on. Within three rounds, he was dead. Another attack from behind. He was thrown to his death 10 meters away. At that moment, a young man, who was not afraid of death, raised both his swords to the monster. But the monster easily killed him with a single swing of its hand. When he sees a hunter trying to escape, at any time, he threw out a smallly flying dagger. It's easy to kill. Then the monster kills them all. People kill people. Trees kill trees. Almost no one was spared against the high-tech alien creatures. Their people were like a stone against a stone. They were killed in an instant. It's like not listening to the children. You get what's coming to you. The little girl was so scared that she crawled. She panicked. She ran away. The little girl's first time out hunting. She's testing her skills on a bear. Isn't that playing with her life like a child's play? She's really not afraid of bears. I don't know if it's because I'm just strong or the bow and arrow are not working. I was just about to open the bowstring and it broke. Frightened bear turned toward the girl, pounced on the girl, but the girl's position is very high. There was nothing the bear could do but to roar at her. And while he was at it, the girl rushed to repair her bow and arrow. The seemingly heavy bear is smart. Soon it takes a shortcut to the other side. In a moment of crisis, the dog leaps down the hill and lured the bear away from his master. But the bear didn't want to take advantage of the dog. He went straight after the dog. I'll come back for your master when I'm done with you. The girl was worried about the dog's safety. After fixing the bow and arrow, she jumped down from the hill. But there was no sign of the dog. There was a roar in the sky. The dog came flying from the distance. The bear was in hot pursuit. The little girl saw that she was outmatched. She turned and ran. She couldn't outrun the bear. She was about to fall into the mouth of the bear. The little girl jumped into the river. She panicked and hid in the dead branches. The bear would not let her go. When it came to its mouth, it wanted to swallow the girl alive. Her life was on the line. The sound of the roar seemed to be close at hand. The bear was immediately attracted to the sound. The girl was also curious to see the sound. She saw a spaceship hovering in the air. It stayed for a moment, then opened its hatch and roared away. It disappeared from sight leaving behind an alien creature that loomed large. It's about the size of a bear. The bear roars and lunges at the creature. It was a tussle of swords. The creature threw the bear into the river and knocked the bear over into the river. The bear was enraged. He rushed forward and pounced on the monster, opened its bloody mouth and bit it. His mouth was filled with greenish blood. The bear was so disgusted, he almost threw up his last night's dinner. He lost his appetite for food. Disappointed, he turned away, but the monster miraculously stood up again and attacked the bear again. The bear turned his head and made a counterattack. Never dreamed that the monster would be pushed back by a single move. His body fell to the ground with a thud, like a mountain. It fell on the girl's side. The little girl was so scared that she held her head in her hands. She didn't dare to say a word. The two-ton fighting bear was lifted over her head by the monster's bare hands. The girl was so stunned, she didn't even have time to see what the monster looked like. The best way to escape is to run away. When the monster is not looking, Dive into the water and run for it. Follow the fast flowing river straight downstream. It took me a long time to get there and finally landed on the bank in the calm water. My father's name is Mo Sane. My family lives on Huayon Road in Yuwa District, Yanjong City. I just want to go to heaven. I won't lose. A man adopted a homeless little girl and kept her as his own daughter. But unexpectedly, on this day, the girl's uncle came to the door with her mother. They wanted to take little one away, but because before, the uncle had shown him Wen's mother's death certificate, so Song Ah thought they were just fooling around. He didn't pay any attention to them, but at night, Wen's mother came to his funeral home alone. He regretted leaving Wen behind. He regretted it very much. When he was a teenager, he went out to work. He got pregnant by accident. The father never heard from her again, and he thought he was still young. 
He didn't want to give up his life. He didn't want to give up his life. So he left Wen with his grandmother. He went abroad to work as an illegal laborer. And Xiao Wen's grandmother, because she couldn't contact him all these years. She thought her daughter was dead. That's why she gave him a death certificate. Now he just wants to take little Wen away. To make up for all these years. Sama got more and more angry. He turned around and wanted to go back to the house. But he fell to his knees right outside the door. I beg you. I beg you. Give it back to me. Listening to the other man's agonizing plea, Sama turned to look at Wen inside the house. His heart was still shaken. The next morning, he cooked a big meal for Xiao Wen. Xiao Wen also saw that he was not normal. He asked him why he looked unhappy. No, he didn't. No, I'm not. I'm not upset. It's just that there's a hole in my chin. AI, uh, your grandma's soccer team is hard work. At that moment, Xiao Wen suddenly asked everyone. Tomorrow the school will hold a parent-child sports meeting. Who has time to participate? Snowy and Fatty wanted to raise their hands. But Wen told them that only one of them could go. In the end, it was Sama's job to do it. Maybe he didn't want to have any regrets. So in every race, Sama would do her best. He tried his best to make sure that Siu Men got the first place. And at the end, when the kids drew their moms and dads, Little One also drew all the faces of Sama. I know you've been lying to me. I'll never see my grandmother again. But I'm not afraid anymore. Because I have a father. Hearing Wen's words, Sama's eyes turned red. And when Xiao Wen burst into tears, he wrapped his arms around his neck. Soon it was time to send Little One away. Sama specially braided his hair. He kept telling him his name and his home address. When he was asleep, while he was sleeping, he carried him to the car. He brought him a lot of necessities. He kept telling Little Wen's mom to his mom about his daily habits. His school bag, he doesn't like to drink water. You must keep an eye on him. Drink more water. This cloth tiger is called Dubin. His grandmother sewed it for him. It's his favorite thing. He likes to touch adults' pots when he sleeps. Then he likes to sit here. When he eats, he likes to gobble his food. You must remind him, don't eat anything that falls on the floor. I'm warning you, I'm warning you. A mom and dad must be nice to him, so that all the old men left. He does not mind to honor again. Uh, before leaving, Sama took out his savings. He wanted little Wen's mom to have it. They kept pushing and shoving through the car window. But Wen suddenly woke up. He stared wide-eyed and asked where he was. Sama quickly explained that this is your real mom. He told him to go home with his mom, but little Wen insisted that his mom was dead. He cried and wanted to get off the bus. Sama's heart was set. He pulled out his arm. He wanted to see little Wen leave. But when he saw Wen lying on the car window, when he saw Wen lying on the window of the car, desperately crying out, he couldn't hold back. He chased after him in the rain. Dead, 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 dead. But it wasn't until he lost his shoes. The car disappeared. Sama couldn't catch up. Such a self-righteous quarrel. Xiao Wen's family, did you ask us for our opinion? We're his parents. His account is with me now, isn't it? You're so selfish. I'm too selfish. Don't you want to break up? Let's break up now. Let's pack up. You're a coward. It's your father's fault that he doesn't like you. It's your girlfriend's fault you're a Google. In the face of his friend's condemnation, Sama surprisingly didn't retort this time. Instead, he smiled bitterly, but at that moment, suddenly his sister called him again. The old man at home, who never liked him, had left. This heavy blow after heavy blow made the originally strong third brother could not hold on any longer. After crying his eyes out, he rushed to fix the old man's face. But then he heard from his sister. Before he died, the old man left him a problem. He asked Sama to put his ashes in a milk powder cup. When? Can you think of a different funeral for yourself? When will you be buried? Otherwise, he would have to stay in the camp for the rest of his life. Sama thought long and hard, finally made a decision. After leaving the funeral parlor, he grabbed his father's ashes. Then he ran back to the store. He asked his friends to cooperate with him to bring in props. Ignoring my sister's pursuit, he poured his father's ashes into a firework in his car, and then lit them on the beach. Successfully let the whole city see his father. Just when San felt that everything had been settled, Tom Wall suddenly got a call that Siu Man was missing. Everyone rushed to look for him, but they searched all the familiar places, but they couldn't find any trace of Siu Man. Until Sama drove back to the store in frustration. Suddenly, there was a sound of Siu Man behind him. Sama, where have you been? I asked you where you've been. You came to me in the middle of the night. What if you were abducted by bad people? What if you get lost? My father's name is Mo Sane. My family lives in Yanjon Ziyuwasu Garden. Now I'm in idle heaven. I won't get lost. Hearing Xiao Wen's words, third brother couldn't hold back any longer. He rushed forward and embraced Xiao Wen in his arms. 
They were both in tears. Bring him here. I'll never leave you behind again. At the end of the movie, Fatty and Baizu successfully held a wedding. The wedding was held at their funeral home. Siu Man's mom rushed to give Siu Man his things. And when San was about to leave, suddenly called out to him. I've heard that if there's one last person on earth, there will be more stars in the sky. Each twinkling star speaks to our loved ones on earth. The most important thing in life, life and death. Life is as joyful as death. <laughs> Because there is a river of ice between them. The man, on the other hand, kept provoking the skeleton army on the other side of the river. But the next moment, the next moment, I didn't realize, at this time, the river surface had already formed a thick layer of thin ice. Skeletons with an IQ of minus 200. The captain looked down, instantly to strike reversed. IQ soared, then he went in the direction of the humans. As expected, at this time the ice city is strong enough, and the rock shot just now, successfully gave the human team and caused great trouble to the human team. With tens of thousands of skeleton soldiers approaching, the human team also launched a counterattack. <laughs> Even though they were strong in combat against the thousands of skeleton soldiers, their chances of winning were slim to none. At this moment, the hound seems to regret why he threw that stone just now. In the course of the struggle, the savage was accidentally caught by the skeletons. He was about to be dragged into the water, but in the nick of time, his teammates arrived in time. They were able to save him, but the crisis is not over yet. Although Snow and others are very capable of fighting, but they couldn't stand up to their opponents. Soon they were forced into a desperate situation. Looking at everything in front of him, Snow seemed to know that this time he was going to die here. But when he was in despair, Mother Dragon arrived with her dragon. The situation was reversed in an instant. With the arrival of Roman, everyone saw hope. With a single blow from the dragon, the skeleton soldiers in front of us were destroyed. Come up with you, when Snow was about to escape from the dragon. When Snow was about to run away from the dragon, there were holes coming from the back. He had no choice but to cover his teammates and retreat. But just when he thought things would turn around. But he didn't know that the captain on the other side had already drawn his ice lance and handed it over to the Night King. And the Night King was holding the ice gun. He walked towards the other side without changing his face. At this moment, the people still don't know what's going on. After everyone got on the bus, Snow was the only one still fighting down there. The Night King is slowly approaching the dragon. The dragon is still unaware of the danger. The danger is on its way. But the clone's mom noticed something was wrong. Soon the other side took the ice gun. She predicted the dragon's position. And in the next second, I'm gonna do the magic in me. He knocked down a white man. He apologized and helped the white man pick up his briefcase. But this action made the white man think he was trying to rob him. Please don't kill me, I'm getting married. I don't want your back man. But the white man's cries for help. But the white man's cries for help attracted the police on the side of the road. The black man ran into the building behind him. The black man ran into the building behind him. He was running around inside, trying to escape the police. But more and more police came. And eventually, more than 10 guns were pointed at his head at the same time. The black man tried to defend himself. Said he just wanted to give him his backpack. But no one in the room, no one was willing to believe what a black man said. In the end, the black man was taken away by the police as a robber. But what he didn't know was, his fate was about to change forever. Because just now, two rich men who witnessed everything, witnessed everything, made a bet on him. The rich man thought that the reason why black people became thieves, because of their environment. If you swap him with our president, I'm sure he could run our company just as well. And the president who lost his job would end up on the streets. But the second richest man doesn't think so. Their CEO graduated from a prestigious school. With his strength, even if he loses his job, he'll still be able to rise again. But the richest man didn't believe that. And so it was. The two tycoons bet a dollar on them. The CEO was in deep shit. The next morning, he was invited to a meeting at the company. But he was bumped by a man arranged by the tycoons. Right in the middle of the meeting, someone said he had lost money. And the stolen money was found in the tycoon's pocket. He didn't even have a chance to explain before the police took him away. The police took him to the police station. They found more contraband on him. As expected, he was sent to jail. On the other hand, two rich men bailed the black man out. They promised him, they promised him an $80,000, a year job as president. He's gonna get a limousine and a mansion. The black man couldn't believe it. But on second thought, it's not like he's going to lose out anyway. So he said yes. When he got back, the rich man told him, this is your home. Everything here is yours, but the black man didn't believe him. Until he broke a $50. 000 face. He broke a 
0.000 face. Then he believed it was real. When you've got money, you've got to go out and have a good time. First he went to a bar, he paid off his previous debts. Then he booked the venue for that night. He invited everyone here to eat and drink. He didn't have enough fun at the bar. He took them home to continue the party. The next morning, two tycoons began to teach him business. The tycoon said they were futures managers. And by futures, they made agricultural commodities. Like coffee, wheat, pork, and so on. Their job, their task was to help their clients buy and sell these futures. Stocks, the point is, whether the client makes or loses money. The point is that whether the client makes or loses money, they get a commission. After the blacks are dead. Sounds of me like you. Sounds of me like you. Guys a couple of bookies. I told you he'd understand. Two rich guys are about to buy pork at 66. Hey, for 66, 80. When the black man heard about it, he thinks it's a bad idea. Because the price is going to go down. It's Christmas vacation. Everybody's in a tight spot. They don't have any money to spare. To buy pork. Negroes say they'll buy it when it gets down to 64. The rich man decides to take a gamble. They took him at his word. And they were right. They saved millions on one deal. At this point, the rich man began to be impressed by the black man. As he was leaving, the black man saw a sum of money on the floor. On the ground, the black man saw a sum of money, and although he wanted to keep it for himself. But then he thought, the rich man was testing him. So he chased him downstairs, and gave the money back to the rich man. The two tycoons were in a state of disbelief, but the white CEO wasn't so lucky. His fiancé had to bail him out. A strange woman suddenly appeared. She flirted with him in front of his fiancé. Fiancé finally couldn't take it anymore. She slapped him in the face, and never wanted to see him again. The white man returned to his mansion. He knocked on the door. The butler pretended he didn't know him. He went to the bank to withdraw his money. He was told that all his cards had been frouncing, and all his bank cards were taken away. Overnight, he went from a high-ranking president to a penniless bum. But the woman who was just instructed thinks there's more to it than meets thigh. The white man's hands didn't look like he was doing manual labor. So she took him in for a while. She took him back to her place. But the woman had her own agenda. I help you get yourself back on your feet, and you pay me in cash five figures. That's the deal and it's not subject to negotiation the next day. The next day, the white man went to get help from his friends. But the way he is now, no one would believe him. He had no choice but to go to the pawn shop. He wanted to sell his watch, which was worth $5,000. But the pawnbroker, looking at him like this, thinks the watch is stolen. He would only pay him $50. On his way back, he saw the Negro laughing with a customer. And that's where he was supposed to be. He complained about how unfair his fate was. And so it was. He decided to take revenge. So on Christmas Day, he dressed up as Santa Claus. He took the opportunity to blend in with the crowd and put some food in his pocket. Then he went to the president's office and put a bunch of contraband in his drawer to set him up. But then the black man came back and saw this. The white man didn't panic. He yelled that the black man was an outlaw. The yelling attracted to rich men. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe that the white president had lost everything. So they called security to get rid of him. It seems that the bet has come to an end. The two billionaires went to the bathroom and finished the bet. The second richest man lost a dollar. Seeing the white man in this state, the second richest man is not going to hire him anymore. Of course not. He's not going to keep hiring a black man as president. But the poor bastards have become the rich man's toys. But what the two tycoons don't know is, the black man was hiding in the bathroom. He heard what they were saying, and he finally realized what was going on. So he rushed to the white man. When he arrived at the scene, he found that the white man had already taken a large amount of sleeping pills. He was ready to end his life. Luckily, he was rescued in time. So far, he's not in any serious condition. The black man told the white man everything he knew. Ruin my life over a bet for how much a dollar? One dollar. The white man was pissed off. Decided he was gonna kick their asses. But the black man didn't agree with him. He thought the best way to hurt the rich is to make them poor. Recently, the Negro president got word to rich man wanted to monopolize the market for frouncing orange juice, and the annual orange production report will be released in the new year in order to get the report in advance. The tycoons have bribed the escort of the report to take down the tycoons. We must get the report before they do. By now, the black man has already arrived at the company and tapped into the phone to find out the time and place. The blacks had already arrived at the company and had overheard the time and place of the deal. The last group approached the dealer as travelers. The girl pretends to ask the trader to help him with his luggage. The black man switched with him using his own suitcase. In order to cover up, several people also knocked out the trader and tied him up. 
Then, the black man pretended to be the traitor to make a deal with a rich man. He used a fake homemade report to get away with it. On the opening day, the two tycoons told their men not to worry about the price going up, to buy up the frouncing orange juice as fast as they could. Because they had received false information, they learned it that this year's orange juice production is not good. The price will definitely continue to rise. The rich men's continuous buy caused other shareholders to follow suit. So the price of frouncing orange juice skyrocketed. The two tycoons were satisfied. When the price reached 142, the blacks and the whites thought the time had come. Because they had bought a lot of frouncing orange juice at a low price in advance. And now they could make a fortune by selling it. As the blacks and whites continued to sell, that caused the price of frouncing orange juice to start falling fast. As fast as they sold, the price dropped as fast as they sold it. The two millionaires saw what was going on. They went downstairs to try to stop them. At that moment, the report of this year's orange juice production was announced on TV. The cold summer has not affected the orange harvest. That means the price of orange juice won't go up. When the report came out, prices fell even faster. At this point, the blacks and whites began to suck in their long positions. They continued to close their positions. Eventually, it dropped from a high of 140 to 29. The blacks and whites made a huge profit, and that two tycoons did not sell the orange juice they bought in time. They lost everything. Hey, how'd you make out today? How could you do this to us after everything? We've done for UOC. I made Lewis a bet here. The Lewis bet me that we couldn't both get rich. Bet me that we couldn't both get rich and put you on the fall house at the same time. Do you think we could do it on one? He doesn't even have a face, but he wears a strange mask. What's even more terrifying is that, once he puts on this mask, everyone around him will die. Those disciples of the Green Cloud sect didn't know that their deaths had already come. In the blink of an eye, all of them were swept into his body. They could only be devoured slowly. At this moment, a beautiful woman with white skin and long legs rushed towards him. He opened his bloody mouth. He sucked one of the disciples into a dry body. The next old man was even more powerful. He controlled a ghost puppet bitch. He started to bite like crazy. Not only that, he also used the ghost leader to control and kill each other with his own people. Do you want to take it? If you do, fight. Then he was bitten to death by the ghost Quay on the spot. The old man wrapped the red rope in his hand. The ghost anemone put the scattered limbs together again, leaping up and returned to the old man. Finally, the grand finale is the well-known piggyback. The two wind swords are not only cool, is also very easy to use. If Gao Tui Lan saw this, Gao Tui Lan would have been charmed by Piggy. When the four guardians are all here, their boss will appear soon. It's a great fantasy movie. If you haven't seen it, you must see the original movie. You won't be disappointed. A girl who escaped with her life. She was in the village, bandaging her wounds. She felt a sudden noise behind her. The girl felt something bad, alertly hiding behind a tree in the foggy forest. A monster is slowly coming to life. Step by step, it's heading towards the girl. Unexpectedly stepped into the trap, the monster laughed so hard that it could not help but scream. The screams are particularly frightening. The hunter and ambush suddenly appeared. Griffin practiced his double team maneuver. The monster is dragged down and followed by the hunter. A huge net is used to control it, but the monster had no trouble at all. It easily escaped from the net. It easily escaped from the net. And with a wave of his hand, he's done with it. The hunter at his side also released an iron net covered the man who was scared. The man was instantly reduced to a puddle of blood. More hunters came to help. Bullets rained down like crazy. The monster instantly opened his umbrella to block it. The bullets couldn't penetrate the thin sheet of iron. While the hunters were filling the gunpowder, the monster puts the umbrella into his arm. He raises its arm and inputs a string of commands. He's outnumbered. It's outnumbered. It's up in the trees. He can't even retrieve his arm from the ground. The hunters are curious to see it. They saw three saucers fly out of the air. Three saucers flew out of the air. Then the clan realized the situation was bad. Before they could retreat, they were blown into the air. After escaping from the encirclement, the monster began to heal itself. From its mouth, it pulled out a high-tech dome. It slowly melted away the wounds. The bleeding wound healed instantly. After the explosion, the scene was horrific. The survivor's thigh was blown off. The pain is unbearable, crawling in abdominal pain. At that moment, the monster came back. He had to fake his own death. A small measurement can't fool a monster. Quickly scan the perimeter with thermal imaging, looking for anything that might have survived. He's rising up along the bloody bottom. He's not going to make it. The little girl was terrified. The monster found her hiding place. Suddenly, a barking dog distracts the creature. The monster's infrared rays immediately lock onto the dog. The infrared rays of the monster immediately locked onto the dog and aimed to kill it. At the critical moment, 
My brother arrived on horseback, easily knocked off the monster's helmet. The infrared light moves to the tree. The monster did not hesitate to open fire. The funny thing is that the bullet circled around, directly hit the tree infrared. The infrared line doesn't hurt. Puppies on the run. While the monster is putting his helmet back on, the little girl raises her gun and sneaks up from behind. Think about it. The helmeted bugs were missed. The little girl picks it up and runs for her life. By the time the monster reacted, the girl was already playing hide and seek with him. While the monster was looking around in frustration, the girl jumped on the monster's head. She jumped on the monster's head and hit him hard. At the same time, she wraps the rope around his neck. The monster, in pain, threw the girl away. The girl's belly hurts, tightens the rope, and drags the monster into the swamp. The monster slowly sinks into the swamp and disappears from sight. After a few moments of calm, the monster magically rises again. He raises his gun and aims it at the girl to kill her. But the girl doesn't look alarmed. It's as if that's exactly what he wants. The gun went off. The bullet grazed the girl. After circling through the trees, it hit the monster right in the head. No matter how good you are, you can't beat a trick. Human ingenuity is invincible. The girl was relieved. She looked up to the sky and roared. The man bends his bow and takes aim. He shot the crocodile in the head. The crocodile shivered for a few moments and stopped moving. She arrived just in time. He reassured Swena that she'd be here before dinner. Swena had to go back to the group. When Dr. Yen appeared, everyone started to applaud. It turned out that today was the day to announce the students' scores. The parents of students with good grades. Parents of students with good grades will be allocated better resources. The parents of the top students will be exempted from labor. Another round of slogans. Teachers took everyone to the apartment. This meant that the students and their parents could not see each other. But he assured them. He assured them that if they applied, he would arrange it for them. And the parents had to accept that. They said goodbye to their children. And they were taken to the basement to filter clean water for the children. That day, Uncle Wa and his men received a report. A body was found by the reservoir. Uncle Wa rushed there and found out. He turned out to be the undercover agent they sent there. Wong Bao had brutally killed him. Everyone in the police station looks gloomy. Uncle Wa looked at Wong Po's photo and felt powerless. The other partner was so angry that he smashed the table. He was cursing and swearing. Then he went downstairs. He bumped into a fool. He was furious. But this idiot said he came to report a murder. He said he'd filmed a murder at the reservoir. When he heard that, immediately grabbed the camera and ran up to tell Uncle Wa. When Uncle Wa heard about it, immediately rushed into the conference room. They watched the video, but they realized Wong Bao couldn't be arrested on this video. Then they made a bold decision. He asked his junior to cut the second half of the video, only showing the footage of Wong Po. At this time, Din came over to help. How can we let others know this kind of thing? Uncle Wa gave an excuse. He said to Dan that you're not going to work until tomorrow. You don't need to be involved in this matter. Uncle Wa went there immediately. He arrested Wong Po. You're suspected of being involved in a murder case. You are now under arrest. It's you again. It's my son's birthday today. Don't make trouble. Today is my brother's death anniversary. Come with me to the police station. Ah, oh, to fists can't be for Hansa. Because of Wong Bao's size, Wong Bao was finally caught by painting book and the others. They caught him in a stacked way and brought him back to the police station and then arranged one of their buddies to look for the fool to check if he has any backup and asked Fatty to change his statement, prepare Fatty to perjure himself to prove that Wong Po killed him, but he's just a videotape seller. How could he find it? So I gave him a lecture and left and left. Little did they know this behavior would bring them to their doom. The assassin who killed the undercover agent was also found. Uncle Wa and the others rushed there to block the assassin. However, the assassin seems to realize that something is wrong. When Uncle Wa and the others went in, the killer immediately kicked down the door. He took the opportunity to run away. Several people chased after him frantically, but the assassin dodged them all. But they forced the killer to the roof of a building. The killer has no way out. Sensing the crisis, he exploded his power. He chose to jump from the roof to the other side. Luckily, he grabbed the ground on the other side of the roof. Just when he thought he had succeeded in escaping, Uncle Hua appeared in front of him. You can imagine what will happen to him. Uh, don't fight, don't fight, don't fight, don't fight. Go to hell. After solving the killer, Uncle Yin and the others went back to the police station to check on Wong Po. 
but they realized that Wong Po was on the phone with the outside world, arranging something. What? One of them tried to stop him. One of them tried to stop him, but he was immediately scolded by Wong Bao. What they didn't know, because of this phone call, has brought them unimaginable harm. This policeman was walking outside at the moment. Soon he sensed something was wrong. Right in front of him appeared the most flamboyant Jin in the whole show. He stepped forward with a dagger in his hand, no matter how the cop tried to stop him. Couldn't stop him. On the contrary, it stimulated him. Instantly threw the dagger in his hand and stabbed the policeman's arm. Then it was a fierce operation like a tiger. Just as Wu Jing, ready to end the life of this police officers, he was shot in the arm. It turned out that our Dan arrived in time. Wu Jing had no choice, he had no choice but to hold the cop hostage while retreating into the darkness. Because of the hostage, our brother Dan, he did not dare to shoot, followed them all the way. After reaching a dark corner, Wu Jing killed the cop in front of Dan. Dan blamed himself for not being able to do anything. He held his colleague's body in agony, and that was the end of it, not when Uncle Wong called. He wanted to ask Dan to take care of the other two brothers. It turns out that today is Father's Day. The daughter of one of the partners, because she's leaving the country, wants to see her father today, so Liao Chi Chi accompanied him to go there. At this moment, this man was talking to his daughter. He looked very happy. Liao Chi Chi called his parents, only to find out his father had passed away last month. He was filled with sadness. This man sent his daughter away. On his way out, she gave him a gift. He was filled with joy, but also in the loss of his daughter's departure from the country. Liao Chi Chi saw this. He was ready to go over to comfort him, but Wu Jing came with a dagger in his hand. When he was unprepared, ended his life. The other cop was still in a state of loss. He didn't come out, didn't even notice what was going on behind him. He wondered what the woman had given him as a gift. Just as he was about to open it, Wu Jing stabbed him in the heart with a dagger from behind. The poor man tried desperately to grab and open it, but there was nothing he could do. Full of regrets, when Dan came over, Liao Chi Chi was not completely dead. Dan came to his side, Liao Chi Chi told him with difficulty, they look like this, maybe it's because the cop before, hacked Wong Po's money, and told him the location of the money. Dan told Uncle Wa about it, Uncle Wa since all his brothers left him, were killed by Wong Po, so he decided to go to Wong Po alone to solve the problem. So will it work out as he wants? I don't know. The consequences of this impulsive behavior is an action movie that's been rated 9, 3 out of 10 by 900,000 people on a pedal. It's an action movie with a high score of 9, 3 out of 10 by 900,000 people. What kind of movie? On a certain pedal, by 900,000 people with a high score of 9, 3 points. At the beginning of the story, this man who looks like him Tawa, drives his car violently against the vehicle in front of him. So angry that our big brother Samo Hung got out of the car directly, broke the car glass, took out to baseball bats. Big brother is also a man of honor. He doesn't take advantage of others. He threw one to Uncle Wa. He was about to start the fight. There was a messy intersection. The fight was over before it started. It turns out that our Uncle Wa is a police officer's. It was hard to catch the big brother this day. On the day of the court hearing, Uncle Wa brought with him a family of three who were willing to appear in court. The three members of the family who are willing to testify against Wong Po. On the way to the court, if nothing goes wrong, an accident is coming, Uncle Painter noticed a car approaching, but he didn't have time to react. It crashed into him. All the people in Uncle Painter's car fell into a coma. At that moment, a racy killer in white appeared. Killed the witnesses, Wong Bao was acquitted because there was no more witnesses. Obviously, this is Wong Bao's arrangement. Uncle Wa was very angry afterwards. The witnesses were a family of three. Now there is only a little girl left. Uncle Wa wanted to get rid of his anger. He started to clean up Wong Po's place. In the middle of it, one of Uncle Wa's partners unintentionally saw that the seized bags were full of cash. He was tempted to save some money for the little girl to raise her. Then Uncle Wa came over. The partner was shocked. Luckily, Uncle Wa didn't see this scene. The man who looked like Dan was talking to Uncle Wa. 
He was talking to Uncle Wa. Uncle Wa is retiring. He's coming to pick up Uncle Wa. Uncle Wa is worried that before he retires, before he retires, he won't have a chance to catch Wong Po. So we left it to Dan. So it took Dan to Wong Po's turf to make a handover. It's not bad if we don't go there. Something will happen. Here we are. Fire. Fire. You're the one who threw the bottle, right? Is it you? Get back. Get back. Get back. We're all standing at attention. Why are you still helping you? Why are you doing this? Get up. Compromise. Step back. Step back. Jump. I'll jump your ass. Stop. A gun is not a big deal. Oh. Shut up. Stop. Okay. 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 The girl was locked in a machine by her parents for 15 years. For 15 years, he never saw the outside world. Because he's had asthma since he was a child, he had to live in a decontamination chamber. But that day, there was an earthquake, causing a total blackout in the city. The purification chamber automatically activated the backup battery. At that moment, the father was very worried about his daughter's safety. He rushed downstairs to go home to take care of his daughter. But when he went downstairs, strange things began to happen. A man ran away in a panic, seems to be running for his life. A flock of frightened birds flew over his head. The sirens sounded throughout the city. The man immediately sensed the danger. He rushed to a crowded place, but what he saw shocked him. A large amount of unknown smoke was coming out of the sewers for no apparent reason. Those who inhaled the smoke fell to the ground and died instantly. The man was still in a state of shock. The same smoke appeared not far away. It was like a sea of water. Everyone ran for their lives. The man turned and ran. He ran home as fast as he could, but his wife didn't know what had happened. He stood by the window and saw all the pedestrians in the street engulfed in smoke. When the man returned home, immediately met with his wife, prepared to take him away. Since his daughter couldn't touch the air, they had to leave her behind. Luckily the evolutionary warehouse protected. Smoke did not enter. The two quickly ran to a higher floor. The smoke kept rising. The couple rushed to the roof, knocked on the neighbor's door. Once inside the house, the wife immediately threw the intercom to find out her daughter's condition. When they learned it, that their daughter was safe and sound in the evolution chamber, the couple breathed a sigh of relief. Then they went to the balcony and looked down. They couldn't see the ground for the whole street. Luckily, the gas seems to have stopped rising, but the man was still uneasy. He took his binoculars and went to the roof to check it out. He was shocked by what he saw. The whole city was engulfed in smoke. The whole city was engulfed in smoke. There was no rescue, no army. There was nothing but smoke. There was nothing to see. The man went back to the corridor to take another look. He touched the smoke with his hand. It didn't do any damage to his skin. As long as it didn't inhale it, he was fine. But due to the power outage, the backup battery of our daughter's purification chamber could only last a few hours. They had to hold their breath. They had to run to the second floor to replace the batteries and then return to the seventh floor. It's impossible. Suddenly the man remembered the old man on the sixth floor. The old man wearing an oxygen mask 
the man decided to take a risk and went to the sixth floor to look for the oxygen mask. The man climbed out of the window. He had to go to the next floor to get the oxygen mask. But down below, the smoke was so poisonous that one breath would be the end of him. The man could only take a deep breath and hold his breath. He climbed down quickly. He smashed the glass and got in. Seeing the old man lying on the ground without breathing, the man did not dare to delay, immediately looking for oxygen. Just when he could not hold on much longer, he finally found it. He hurriedly put on the mask, turned on the oxygen, and breathed heavily. Then he found a backpack. He put the oxygen tank in the bag and put it on his back. Just as he was about to leave, suddenly he heard a noise in the room. He took out a hammer to masturbate. Then he carefully opened the door and saw a little dog. But here's the strange thing. The puppy wasn't dead. It was the mom who died. In the evolution chamber, I changed the batteries and left in a hurry because the backup batteries were running out fast. He needed to go out on the street to find a battery reserve. But when he got to the street, the sight in front of him made him shudder. The streets and alleys were strewn with corpses. The man found a random car and took out a couple of batteries. Suddenly, he heard a whistle coming from up ahead. He rushed for it to check it out. They didn't know what kind of poison it was. They didn't know what kind of poison it was. They only knew that the poison came from the ground. The soldiers saw that he was not wearing a gas mask. So they gave him a set of pure oxygen gas protective equipment and let him follow the troops. The man remembered that his wife and daughter were still at home. He refused the soldiers offer. Before his execution, the man asked the soldiers. He asked the soldiers for an extra set of protective gear. During the night, a careful observer noticed that the poison seemed to be rising. He marked it with a pen. An hour later, the poison had risen a few centimeters. They had to get out of here as soon as possible. But the daughter can't be exposed to the air. She'll have to wear a spacesuit to get out. The suit is only available at the lab in the city center. It takes an hour or two to get there and back. The daughter found out that her parents were going to look for the suit. She told them to visit her friend. Because his friend had his malachim. And his parents weren't with him yet. The couple was reluctant. But they finally agreed with their daughter. But when they arrived at their daughter's friend's house. They were surprised to see. A big dog was staring at them fiercely. They realized the situation was not good. They ran away immediately. Due to poor visibility ahead. The man fell into the river. The dog turns to chase the woman. The woman is forced to hide in the bus. The dog followed her. He jumped right at him. Luckily. The dog's leash got caught in a suitcase. The woman broke the window and ran away. She went to the river to look for her husband. Ho had panicked and fallen into the water. Luckily, the husband was fine. He struggled to get to shore. They met and rushed to the lab. When they arrived at the lab, the woman felt like she was at home. They quickly found the spacesuits. But just as they were escaping, danger struck again. An explosion caused the man to catch fire. The woman found a fire extinguisher and put out the fire. At that moment, the man felt that he could not breathe oxygen. He realized that the oxygen tube had been burned out. The two had no choice but to share an oxygen mask, helping each other to reach the stairs with difficulty. The woman bandaged her husband's wounds. After organizing their equipment, they were ready to leave. At that moment, the husband suddenly realized that the woman's oxygen was about to run out. There is not enough oxygen for both of them to return. There was no other way. The man had no choice but to let his wife go back with her spacesuit. He planned to find his way back from the roof. The woman didn't want to leave, but she had no choice. She had to run back with the suit in tow. When they finally got downstairs, oxygen has completely bottomed out. She held her breath and took off her suit and carried the heavy suitcase and ran to the roof in one breath. Back to the house. When he opened the box, his wife was completely devastated. The sugar gourd was charred. It was unusable. On the other hand, the man came all the way from the roof, but accidentally found a pile of supplies halfway. When he went up, he saw a rope here. The man called out but no one answered. So he climbed up the rope. When he got to the roof, he found a dead body lying on the ground. There was a large blood stain around him. Apparently he had been killed and dragged out by a man. Go inside and take a look. In the corner, there were a lot of supplies. Among them was an oxygen tank. He immediately put it on his back. He was about to run away. Suddenly a man in a police uniform approached him. He said it belonged to him. He asked him to put the oxygen tank back on his back immediately. The man secretly opened the oxygen valve and asked him. When he saw the policeman was about to draw his gun, the man immediately rushed forward and jumped with him. The cop didn't have a mask. He couldn't hold on any longer. The man took the gun and ran away as fast as he could. When he came back to the stairs, he found his wife dead on the stairs. It turns out, the woman realized that her daughter's evolutionary pod's batteries were dying. In order to save her daughter, 
he risked his life to run downstairs when he came back to replace the battery for his daughter. His body had reached its limit. When he walked through the door of his home, the man could no longer control his tears. When he heard his daughter's voice, he still held back his tears and told him the sad news. Soon the earthquake struck again. The man ran to the balcony to see and found that the poisonous gas was rising even faster. The man planned to go downstairs to help the old man find an oxygen tank and take the two old men away with him. But the elders refused. Then the two elders lay on the bed, holding hands, silently waiting for death. The man looked at his daughter and then decided to look for protective clothing again. After a long walk, finally found an ambulance overturned on the side of the road. Sure enough, there was a protective suit in the ambulance. Yasuko got up, opened the door, take out the suit. On the way back, he saw a motorcycle. I didn't realize the motorcycle almost killed him. He rode the motorcycle very fast. When he was almost home, the boy suddenly jumped out. When he woke up, he saw the figures coming out of the smoke. He limped forward and realized it was his daughter. He flew over to her and hugged his father tightly. The man held his breath in excitement. He took off his mask and kissed his daughter. It turned out the boy he was with was his daughter, a boy who let his parents visit him at home. It's amazing. This smoke doesn't cause any harm to us medics. Next is the father's turn to live in an oxygen warehouse. And it's the daughter's turn to take care of him. This is a disaster movie of life and death. It's a disaster movie of life and death, of recovery and hope. Under the shadow of doom, they hold on to their belief in love. They fight for the survival of their loved ones. Though the world becomes strange and cruel, they hold each other's hands tightly, and together they